Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and to another episode of the Tottenham Hotspur Transfer Talk series and yet another Tottenham Transfer Roundup as we're yet to get concrete news on any signing for Spurs this window. There's 33 days to go until the beginning of a Premier League season against Manchester City and today I'm going to bring you up to date on all of the situations with the players that we are reportedly interested including Takahiro Tomiyasu as we edge closer to a deal being confirmed there. We're also going to look at the latest in the naming rights situation for the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and an update on a potential departure from the Tottenham Hotspur board. Before we do get into all of those stories and a little bit more, do make sure to hit that subscribe button on the channel if you are new to keep up to date with all of this as the transfer window goes on. Uh, make sure to hit the like and the stream as well if you're looking forward to the signing of Tommy Yazoo. Uh, if you want to get your transfer questions in, you can either use the hashtag Ask Matt Hayes on Twitter or put them in the, in, the, in the live chat. I'll get through them. If you want to guarantee your comments right out, pop in a super chat and I'll get to those as soon as I possibly can. Uh, Hoiber, the general, Callum, Niall, Steve, Joe, Tommy, uh, Ganesh, Jason, uh, all of you, uh, Caleb and Rune as well in earlier. Thank you for joining. Uh, it's always good to see uh, you in the live chat. I hope you're all doing well. Um, first of all, commiserations to the, the England fans for, for their defeat last night. Um, look, you know, I, I'll, I'll want you to lose as much as possible. But when that loss happens, I'm not going to slag you about it. I'm not going to joke about it because I, as a Tottenham fan, know better than anybody else how it feels. So my commiserations to the England fans. Congratulations to the Italian fans. Uh, thankfully now the yours are over so we can focus purely on Tottenham Hotspur transfer news uh, Killian good to see you in the live chat as well um, Simon and Stuart saying I might take that smile off your face from last night's result like I said like I said uh, we'll, we'll leave it there uh, Joe Thurgood says hi Matt been a while since I've been in the live chat glad to be back it's good to see you back Joe um, I, I appreciate you tuning in Aaron says what source is the Tamiyazu news coming from and we'll dive straight into that we'll dive straight into the Takahiro Tamiyazu news and the this story is coming from a, a number of different sources really and the main one is is Fabrizio Romano. Um, the essentially the deal is expected to be done before the Olympics begin and the Olympics start on the twenty third of July, which is eleven days from now. And I'm pretty sure Tommy Yazu is in the in the Japan squad for the Olympics, and they they'll want to get that deal sorted. Both Tommy Yazu, Bologna, uh, on that side of the deal, and Spurs on our side of the deal to get it finished uh, as quickly as possible. And uh, Fabrizio Romano tweeted very very early yesterday morning said Tottenham are currently the only English club negotiating to sign Takahiro Tamiyasu. Talks ongoing with Bologna. Uh, Atalanta want him too, but Spurs are leading the race. Tamiyasu wants to join Tottenham. Final decision soon. Arsenal are not in the race as of now. And that is where the discrepancies within the reports on this story um, are, are coming out because Gianluca Di Marzio has said in the last couple of days that Arsenal are also in talks to sign Takahiro Tamiyasu. Now, it does seem as though whether Arsenal are in the mix or not, that he he does want to he does want to join Spurs, but a bit of discrepancy there about who was actually uh trying to get a deal done for Tommy Azu. Uh Sean become a channel member joining the, the Premier League level uh the membership. Thank you very much for that, Sean. Uh we'll have another uh, member call and show this week. If you do want to pop on and have your say in that, uh please do. But thank you very much for the support on the channel and I hope you enjoy all of the, the perks that you get from that membership. Anyone else, if you do want to become a, a member, you can hit that join button down below and everything will be explained for you there. Um Joseph Donnelly says, I've been analysing this player since January. His international friendly display versus Moldova was where he really showed how much he can add in that final third. And I, I look, Tommy Azu is a fantastic player, both defensively and going forward. I know in, in the analysis I did of him, uh, he, he averages only 0.2 crosses per game, but half of the games he played last season were in centre-back. Um, so, you know, it's it, it, those stats are always going to be that little bit skewed, but he is a very good player going forward. And uh, Alistair Gold said last week or the week before that he could potentially be seen uh, as, as a left centre-back and Joe's asking the question there do you think he would come come uh, in as a centre-back or right-back I, I would have thought it would have been as a centre-back and Gold made the brilliant point that we could play almost that lopsided back four that we did last season but in in a way kind of transitioning it to to a back five and having Tommy Azu in the left centre-back role which would allow Sergio Regalon to have so much freedom down that left-hand side Tommy Azu could be that uh, that cover for him there because he's experienced defending centrally in terms of maybe deal crosses from the other side, but he can also pull out wide and defend out there as he plays half his games uh, at fullback as well. He played two at left back last year. Mainly, he does mainly play at right back, but he can play out in the left as well. But goal is saying today he could be coming in as a right back. You know, Serge Aurier is expected to move on this summer. Uh, Gianluca Di Marzio said that AC Milan are interested in signing him, so there could definitely be a vacancy there. But I, I think there will be um there will be a bit of a, a disagreement there between. Fabio Paratici and Nuno Espirito Santo is who is actually going to play in the right back position. If Paratici does want Tommy Azu, well, I, I think Santo is going to want uh, Matt Doherty to be given that chance there, given how much he thrived under the, the Portuguese manager at Wolves. So it, it will be interesting to see how that plays out. And it'll be very interesting to see 
what actually happens with uh, with Tommy Azu if he does come in. Uh, before we keep discussing that, I want to bring the last few bits. Uh, La Gazzetta dello Sport, uh, another Italian source, has said that Tottenham are expected to complete the signing of Takahiro Tommy Azu before the start of the Olympics. Now, if you do want to take a look at the uh, analysis I did of Takahiro Tommy Azu, I did it on a stream last week. I uploaded it on its own as a video today. So you can check out the, the link at the top of the description. It will bring you straight through to that video. But he's, he's a good signing for Spurs. And I'm not going to sit here and say he'll, he'll jump straight into that starting eleven, or um, he's going to be the player that will transform our defence. He's not going to be the best defender in the Premier League. I don't know too much about him to say uh, to either extremity whether he'll be really good or really bad, but he's a good signing. He's a solid signing. And he's one that if he's attracting attention from Atalanta in this area, well, then there's bound to be uh, some bit of quality that he will bring to the team because Atalanta have been the entertainers of Europe in the last couple of seasons. And look, he, he, he's going to be a good player for us. Uh, Ellie, good to see you in the live chat. <clears throat> Jiminy coming in with the, the $15, $15 super chat. Jiminy, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Says, long time no see. Depression and work are kicking me lately. Uh, do we know if Bale is saying it? Jiminy, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, my DMs and Twitter are always open if you ever need a chat. Um, that goes to, to everybody out there, not, not just Jiminy. Uh, Jiminy, I, I hope, you're, I hope you're, you're feeling better, but do reach out uh, if you ever need a chat. Uh, it, it pers- personally, I think Gareth Bale won't be staying, to, to answer the second part of your question there. Um, he's he's met with Carlo Ancelotti recently in Madrid to cur- try and finalize that future, but it does look as though he will be staying with Real Madrid to see out the last year of his contract, and that's then when he'll make his decision uh, if he is going to continue playing or if he is going to move on to to a different team. But uh, Jiminy, message me, and it it I I personally don't think we'll see Bale uh, at the club next season. Harrison, good to see you. Says, hey Matty, hope you're doing well. Well, sir, club drains the main pieces of our desire and passion for football. My question is, what's your opinion on what happens with Doherty? Keep it up, mate. Uh, thank you for that, Harrison. I think Doherty needs a chance. I think Doherty needs he needs to be given the opportunity because you you, you can't always judge a player off his first season at a club. You know, um, speaking to other Spurs YouTubers over the last couple of weeks on channels and and, and off off air as well. You know, you look at the likes of Musa Sissoko who had a terrible first season. And people wanted to bin him. Granted, he's gone back to that standard, but he did have a good year or two in there when he was a really beneficial player for our team. Uh, Hyman's son, after his first season, as far as wanted to leave, nearly left. Look at him now. So you, you can't judge him off one season. And look, as an Irish fan, of course, of course, I want to see him do well. And there's there's that added sort of passion for him, for me to see him go on and be a, a very good player for Spurs, given the the lack of, of Irish players we've had really since since uh, Robbie Keane left. But the quality is there. And I, I always say he was a very good player under Nuno Espirito Santo at Wolves, but he was also a very important player. It wasn't just when he was needed, he was he was brilliant. He was a heavy, heavy part of, of their, their style of play, tactically, both going forward and defensively. So I think he does need to be given a chance. If we are bringing in Tommy Azu as a right back to let Sergio Aurier go, I think Tommy Azu has to be second choice. You know, he, he could probably play in that right centre back role and Doherty could play right wing back as well. But if they are being brought in for the same position, I think Tommy Azu is second choice and we need to give Doherty that chance to to prove himself because he has the ability to to be that player. Um, Christopher says, England and Tottenham are one and the same and I support them both. Well, Christopher, I'm doing well. Um, I, I'm not sure who you're doing well given last night's result, but uh, good to see you in the in the live chat as well. Steve says, Doherty needs some football to get some form. And that's also true. He wasn't given much of a a consistent chance last season to, to really prove exactly what he was able to do, but the quality is there. Uh, it's just about getting that out of him and it's maybe a manager who can you know, uh, adapt to him tactically is is the way we need to go. Um, Say is uh, asking for Lacroix news. There's no updates on Max Sense Lacroix since the stream we did on uh, was it Friday, Thursday or Friday. Um, he's simply just still a target uh, to bring in the lines from Romano and Di Marzio again. Um, Fabrizio Romano said Wolfsburg centre back Max Sense Lacroix is a tra- is a Tottenham transfer target this summer, and Gianluca Di Marzio said Fabio Paratici is interested in bringing twenty one year old Wolfsburg defender. Max sense Lacroix to Tottenham Hotspur this summer. So there's no real updates on that one. But, you know, we go back to the the, the negotiation tactics that, that Fabio Paratici is using. He's going to negotiate for a number of players in the same position and then decide which ones are the best options. So that is why we have updates today on Tommy Azu, Kunde, Vestergaard, Milenkovic. And we're, we're still asking um, for, for Lacroix as well. There's a number of players we'll be talking about, but um, only one or, or two of them will be coming in. Uh, to bring you those other updates, not from the most reliable sources, so I'm just going to touch over them briefly. Um, but according to Cadena Ser in, in Spain, Jules Kunde is currently unconvinced by Tottenham, although Spurs are very keen on the defender and are willing to pay the required fee. Um, other reports in the last couple of days, uh, El de Marc from Spain have also said Tottenham have a fight in their hands to convince the Villa defender Jules Kunde to join the club as he considers them a second-tier team, while Fabrizio Romano says that we're still in contact with his agents, just trying to... To understand what his price is, we've inquired to Sevilla about that, and that is when we will make our final decision. And 
I've said it from, from minute one, I don't think June's Kunde joins Spurs simply because we're in the Europa Conference League and he's very expensive and will have uh, options of, of joining much better teams. So I think Kunde is, is simply a, a dream that we may have for, for a week or two. And we may get to the point of making a bid, but I, I, I really don't think this one will develop. Um, I think it'll go down the same route as the Bru, Bruno Fernandes, Paolo Dybala, Philip Coutinho, all those transfers that we're, we're all too familiar with. Um, so I, I don't think Jules Kunde will come in. Someone who's definitely a realistic option is Yannick Vestergaard. However, if TalkSport are to, believe, to be believed today, um, that might not materialise. As they say, Southampton are not keen to do business with Tottenham over a deal for Yannick Vestergaard after their dealings last summer for Pierre-Emile Hoybier. Um, we were in negotiation for, for about six months for Southampton over Pierre-Emile Hoybier. As in the January transfer window, we made a move for him on the last day of the season. We were told, just wait till the summer, we'll get it done then. Uh, we managed to, to sign him for £15 million. Pounds. Of course, with Kyle Walker-Peters going the other way for 12 it looks as though Southampton didn't quite enjoy those negotiations uh, as much as Spurs did, and that could prohibit any sort of a deal materialising this summer for Yannick Vestergaard. Brian Daigle in the live chat, always good to see you in there, my friend, says, hey Matt Hayes, how are you and everyone in the chat? Brian, I'm good. Uh, I hope you're, you're you're feeling okay after yesterday's results. Um, he says, now all eyes are on Tottenham and Levy. Everyone remember, for breaking news, always go to Matt Hayes as opposed to Sky Repeat Nonsense News. Thank you very much for that, Brian. Uh, I, I do appreciate it. Um... And the other centre-back update there is for Nikola Milenkovic Nazione in Italy, who has said that Tottenham made a bid for Fiorentina Nikola Milenkovic. It was deemed as a low offer and not enough to uh, to tempt the Italian club to sell. And Nikola Milenkovic has, has one year left on his contract at Fiorentina, but it can't be ruled out that he will sign a new deal, which would, of course, massively increase the, the price tag that Fiorentina could be looking for. So if that's a deal we want to do, it's one that we would have to get done uh, quickly. But we're Spurs, that's not going to happen. Um, please don't spam the live chat. Uh, Jiminy with another super chat with a 450. Thank you very much for that, Jiminy. Massively appreciate it. Says, any news on Sonny's new contract? There's nothing official on that. It just seems to be a waiting game and just waiting for, for the official announcement on that. It's It's been since last October, maybe November, uh, that we've been talking about this and, and waiting for Son to put pen to paper. Uh, it hasn't done yet. It hasn't been signed or it hasn't been announced yet. It may have been signed. But we'll just have to wait for that announcement. I think it is only a matter of time. I'd be very, very surprised if it isn't uh, made made official anytime soon. So I think just it's it's a waiting game on this one. But I do think uh, we will see Sun's contract signed soon. Uh, now the player that uh, you're all asking for, you all, you all want to hear about, is Mikel Damsgaard. And we have two reports coming out of Italy today that Spurs are interested in signing him. But Sampdoria may want just a little bit more than what Spurs are willing to pay. Uh, La Gazzetta dello Sport are saying that Tottenham have been informed by Sampdoria that a move from Mikel Damsgaard will cost £34 million, while Tudo Sport are saying that Tottenham are interested in signing Mikel Damsgaard. Fabio Partici is an admirer of the player, having wanted to sign him for Juventus. And of all the of all the players that have had fantastic European championships, you can look at Leonardo Spinazzola, who we were linked to before the competition started, of course, suffering a poor injury. Um, one player who certainly stood out is Mikel Damsgaard of Denmark, the, the player who scored that wonderful free kick in a semi-final defeat to England. A lot of teams are going to want him, and I, I think Sampdoria will really struggle to hold on to him this summer. But they can also really ask for a high price because his, his stocks are in are in huge demand with the, the performance he put in at the Euros. His age, he's only 23 years of age, and the, the teams that want him. This is, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's more realistic than the Jules Kunde one. I think if I had to pick one of these that I could see materialising, it would be the Damsgaard deal, but... It really just depends on, on what other teams are interested and how sincere Tottenham's interest actually is. And we're going to touch on a few more midfielders in a second and then going to have a quick chat about kind of why we're being linked to a lot of midfielders now when it was defenders in, in the last week or so. Um, so Damsgaard, it's one that could happen. It's one that we certainly have to keep an eye on. Uh, not the most reliable sources in terms of Tottenham transfer news with uh, La Gazzetta della Sport and Tudor Sport. However, like I've been saying the whole way through this transfer window since Fabio Paratici came into the club, we're going to see a lot of uh, reports coming out of Italian papers and we do have to take them a bit more seriously than we usually would because the way it's done in Italy, the way the transfer window runs over there is quite simply, everything's public. You know, you look at, I always use the example of Christian Eriksen when he signed for Inter Milan, his medical was public. He arrived there without anything being done and it was made public. So that's just the way it works and you're hearing from the English side of things that there are people within Spurs who are frustrated about how public that managerial pursuit was. That's Paratici. It's, it's just the way it works. It's It may it may be different to us. It may not be the way we want it to happen, but it's, it's the way it's going to be from now on. It's what we need to get used to. And that is why we're going to start talking about more and more about these links from, from Italian sources as well. Um, The other two midfielders we've been linked to, both coming out of Le... I'm trying to think of what 10 is in French. Le D Sport, I think it is. Um, Talking about Hussein Auer and Renato Sanchez. So it's Alexis Bernard 
from a D Sport who says that Tottenham are thinking of Liam midfielder Hussein Auer this summer and Tottenham have a strong desire to sign Lille star Renato Sanchez this summer and interest is very real. So those are where uh, those two links are coming from. Two players play in France. It's a French source. Let's take a bit more uh, notice of it. And it's, it's interesting, like I said, that we're being linked now to a lot more midfielders than we were uh, last week because it was all defenders last week. Now it looks like it is all midfielders. That to me tells me our defensive deals are done. That to me tells me Takihiro Tamiyasu deal is, is all but confirmed and we're just waiting for an official announcement on that because like we were saying, the way Paratici is doing business this summer as per Alistair Gold and Fabrizio Romano is to identify a pool of players in a certain position, go out and negotiate for those players and then once those negotiations are done, try and decide which player is the best one to sign based on their price and that's when we can bring them in. So if this Tamiyasu deal is as close as we're hearing, that would make sense that we've now moved on to the next position and we're looking at Damsgaard, we're looking at Auer, we're looking at uh, Renato Sanchez maybe uh, other players in the Premier League and the, across the, the Serie A as well. So I think we're going to start seeing these rumours for the midfielders really heat up over the next week or two and hopefully we'll get one in. As I said, it's just over a month before the season starts uh, and we'll, we'll want to get that business done as quickly as possible. Our Sanchez, I can't, I, I can't really see them happening and that could just be the, the cynical side of me uh, as a Spurs fan just thinking, well, I mean, there are better teams out there. The fact that we're in the Europa Conference League is going to be a massive stumbling block for us as we move throughout this transfer window. Really, whatever player we're looking at because... You know, yes, Tottenham are a big club. Yes, they're one that a lot of younger players will view as a Champions League club, as we have been for half, really, of the last decade. But you also have to think of the, the immediate future. The, the immediate future of Tottenham isn't certain at all. It's not. There's nothing to say that we'd be back in the Europa League next season or back in the Champions League in three, four seasons. You know, you may, as a, as a player looking for the best team to join, you can say, well, look, West Ham are in the Europa League. If Tottenham want me, why would I go there when I could get a better offer in, in a better competition from them? So it's going to be really difficult to get these deals done this summer. And it is it is concerning. I think that is probably the, the best uh, benefit of having Fabio Paratici on board because he is a man with a fantastic reputation, with fantastic contacts as well. And maybe he can uh, kind of pull the strings a bit more on these ones. But these big players that we're being linked to, I, I really think we need to take these with a massive pinch of salt and I probably just expect a, a mediocre window at best. Uh, like I said, there are so the last transfer rumor is Carriero, uh, Carriero de Mania, uh, who says Tottenham are one club competing to sign FC Porto FC Porto winger Luis Diaz. Just a quick story to bring you there. I don't know too much about him or that story, but I'm sure we'll analyze it in a bit more detail in the coming days and weeks. Uh, Rune says uh, Darmscore Darm score is a better pronunciation. So not Darmscore, it's Darmscore. I appreciate that, Rune. I'll, I'll definitely use that one going forward. Um, two other updates to bring in today, uh, both coming from the Daily Mail, but don't laugh because they're not transfer stories, so there may be a bit of a, a, a bit of substance to them. Uh, Daniel Levy is in advanced talks over a naming rights deal for the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, and a deal could be confirmed before the new season. That could be some well-needed income for the club if we are to, to get that one over the line. Um, Simon Feldstein, the Director of Communications, is leaving Tottenham after 15 years. Uh, it is understood that staff were made aware of the shock announcement over email last week. And he's now been placed on three months of gardening leave before he will eventually leave the club. So quick update to bring you there on that one as well. Harrison says, um, oh, how are you not spamming at all, Harrison? Don't worry. Uh, there's, there's some other people, however, who are. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts on a load of things. Um, I'll leave this as my last question. Thoughts on Delhi and his future if we do sign a midfielder. The Delhi situation is a very interesting one because when by the time Patrino left, you felt as though he may have been getting to the end of his tether with, with Delhi Ali, and maybe it was time for him to move on. But all of a sudden you know, Pochettino's gone and Jose Mourinho comes in and one of the first things he does is he goes to Deli Ali and he, he tries to get the best out of him and initially he did. Um, Ali was playing very, very well at the, the start of Mourinho's tenure and then that started to fall apart and then you're hearing these these links to PSG and you think, okay, now Deli Ali will leave and then again, we have a new manager coming in. So, it, it, it's really down to um, what, what Nuno Espirito Santo wants uh, within from a midfielder or what he wants from Deli Ali and we certainly don't know what that is because... We, we, we haven't heard him speak and we don't we haven't heard any rumours about Delhi moving on. I personally want him to be a, a player for Spurs. I want him to stay. I think we can get better out of him. Um, but I'm not going to hold my breath because it, it really could go any way. A, a, a new midfielder coming in, depending on his mentality, it could be that um that competition that he needs to really kick on and to, to become a better player. But it could also be the, the final nail in his coffin that he just can't respond to uh, and that he eventually um he eventually falls away from. Um, but we have got an update from Fabrizio Romano on the um, on the deal for Takahiro Tamiyasu. Uh, so let's get this uh, breaking news intro rolling. Uh, 
Fabrizio Romano has said that Takihiro Tamiyasu has agreed personal terms with Tottenham and the deal is now real close with a new proposal on the table from Spurs as we try and negotiate the final £2 million of this deal as Bologna look to let go of Takihiro Tamiyasu. We said this deal would be announced or should be announced before the Olympics are beginning and it's getting closer and closer with every day that passes. Again, Fabrizio Romano saying that Takihiro Tamiyasu has agreed personal terms with Tottenham and the deal is now really close as we put a new proposal on the table for Bologna. So that one could get an announcement in the next couple of days. Hopefully we do. You now, of course, all the the uh, you know medical and, and contracts have already probably still to go, uh, but an important update there from Romano that uh, personal terms have been agreed. Um, if you do want to get your questions in, you can put them in the live chat or if you can also tweet me uh, using the hashtag AskMattHayes. I'll read all of those out. Um, and tag me at Matt Hayes THFC as well because for some reason they, they don't all show up in a search for the hashtag um, but I'll go through the live chat as well um, and I'll, I'll see what's, what uh, questions we can get from here uh, Chris says hi Matt enjoyable show don't forget to smack that like people and subscribe thank you for that Chris I appreciate it I, I'm glad you're enjoying the show uh, like we said a while ago in the, in the chat we're on the road to 10,000 subscribers before the season starts which is, uh, which is baffling to me it's a crazy crazy number uh, so please do hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. I would really appreciate it. We're going to have Fabrizio Romano himself back on the channel in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I can I can guarantee you you won't want to won't want to miss that one. Um, let's take a look at some questions here in the chat. Um, Jared says I'm skeptical of players who are bought on their form of the Euros or World Cups. Past experiences of Pavlyuchenko, Rebrov, etc., etc. And look, that that is, um, that is a, a concern. You know. Any player can go off and have a have an incredible tournament. You know, I remember Alexander Golovan for Russia in the World Cup in 2018 had a brilliant tournament. He was then deciding between Monaco and Chelsea. He went to Monaco and nearly got relegated the next season, and he's still there, just kind of as an average midfielder. And any momentum, I suppose, that he had gathered in his career had uh, had quickly faded. Um, so, uh, some more updates here from uh, Il Resto del Carlino. Don't know what the source is, but it's on. Uh, it's on Takahiro Tamiyasu. They say there's now minimal difference between Spurs and Bologna for defender Tamiyasu. So this one getting closer by the second and should probably be done uh, before the end of the week. Looking likely to be uh, Nuno Espirito Santos first signing uh, as Tottenham head coach. Ben Holt says, I feel if Kunde and Lacroix came in, uh, we will be a Champions League side. And look, we, we bulk up that defence. We're right in that mix for the Champions League football. I still personally don't think we'll get there. But we're up there because I, I don't think our squad is too many players off. Um... I don't think we're too many players off being a Champions League side because we have a really good squad. We have a really good roster. It's just about getting the best out of those and, and getting a manager who'll, who'll use tactics that suits the players. You know, you, you don't want to be playing defensive football if you're going to have Ndabele, Son and Harry Kane on a pitch because with that attacking quality, you want to be putting them forward. Even Gareth Bale added that last season as well. So hopefully the, the attacking style of play mixed with a, a better defence is um is is what Spurs need for the for the season ahead. Um, SOF says Renato Sanchez is a possibility because George Mendes is his agent. That's absolutely true. I think we will see links to, to a lot of George Mendes players this summer. Maybe maybe that is the only reason there are talks about Renato Sanchez, but it is a possibility with uh, Mendes' links to Paratici and to Nuno Espirito Santo as well. Um, Detrix Kane says, any truth on Milenkovic news according to Spurs web Twitter? Um, looking at the source of looking at the source of those stories, um, it's Spurs web, of course, not the source, but uh, La Nazione is Pinch of salt uh, is probably the only thing I can say there, but um, keep an eye on it because the Italian sources for Italian teams are, are, are probably a lot more accurate than we'll see on, on any uh, any English sources or anything like that. Uh, Joe says, what positions do you think need strengthening this summer? It's defence, defence and defence for us. It really is. And you can see with even what uh, Demarzio Romano goal are all saying, the Tottenham are focusing on, um, on bringing in defenders and we look maybe to be getting that first deal done, but... We just need to get in defenders. So our, our defense, I mean, on paper, if you're looking at how many goals we conceded last season, we were in the top five in the league. But the reason that was is because we put everybody behind the ball and we doubled the amount of players we had defending because our defenders weren't good enough to do it. Or our lack of goals scored are a result of uh, defending too deep. And that's why the defensive, the goals conceded numbers are quite decent. But our defense just isn't good enough. And I don't think any any uh, any fan will deny that. Um. So so hopefully we, we'll get those signings in and, and that's what needs to what needs to happen. Uh, SOF with a different opinion says we're all talking about the defence but there are six centre-backs at the club we need to replace Vinicius and Bale they're gone there are six centre-backs at the club but half of them are useless and half of them you, you would hope are moving on but I agree we do need to replace Vinicius and Bale uh, Alistair Gold said during the week that um, we are expected to sign uh, another quote established striker 
uh, this summer and I think we will replace Bale with a right winger as well. It looks like Lucas Moura will be staying so maybe he's the one that Spurs hope will replace Gareth Bale but um, I, I think we do need to bring one in as well. Aaron says things all have seemed worse than they really are and better than they really are. A few solid additions and I think we will surprise ourselves this season. I certainly hope you're right Aaron. I agree that we, we are perhaps not in as bad a situation as it may feel but um, hopefully we will get those uh, those solid additions this summer. It's going to be an interesting transfer window, that's for sure, and it's going to be interesting to see which players we do manage to move on and which ones we manage to keep. But if you do want to be kept up to date with all of that news, the first place you're going to hear it on YouTube and the best analysis of our transfer targets is right here at Matt Hayes Tottenham Blog. So please do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's see if we can get to 10k before Tottenham kick off their season against Manchester City on the 15th of August. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this stream, and as always, thanks for watching. That's awkward. Give me a second. Thanks for watching.